The dread shed is way more nerve wracking than everybody talks about. Dread shed is a real thing. Glad she's applying the product to the actual scalp skin and parting her hair. Let's talk about Rogaine today. Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing with your friends. Thank you for your engagement. I'm having a lot of fun here on the channel and it was really good to be on TikTok the other day and see this creator show how she uses minoxidil, topical minoxidil or Rogaine and the dread shed that is associated with it. So we'll talk about all of these shocking facts around Rogaine, when you start Rogaine, what to expect, how long should you be using it? When will you start seeing results? We're gonna address all those things in this video because hair loss has been a very popular and sadly a very common complaint or issue in my practice. In clinic, patients are definitely talking about it and not just during the pandemic with all the stress that was going on, but also post pandemic, even now we're getting a lot of patients even in their early 20s, like I had a 19, 20 year old patient who coming in and they could see a lot of his scalp because his hair is falling out so much. So there's different types of alopecia. Alopecia is a symptom, meaning hair loss. It is not a diagnosis because there are different types of alopecia and we've talked about this on the channel. Alopecia can be broken down to scarring and non-scarring alopecia. Most of the alopecia that I see is non-scarring. Scarring alopecia you might see with autoimmune conditions like lupus, for example, can cause scarring alopecia or lichen planal pilaris LPP or frontal fibrosing alopecia those will cause scarring alopecia this video will be talking about non-scarring alopecia and specifically the topical medication Rogaine or minoxidil so let's jump into it I compiled a nice little list of shocking facts regarding Rogaine and so the first one we'll talk about is dread shed dread shed meaning you're gonna lose your hair more readily sorry it sounds counterintuitive but this does happen when you start either oral low dose minoxidil which is traditionally a blood pressure medicine but we found out that medication can help with hair regrowth and I've prescribed it many times and my patients do very well, but not everyone's a candidate. Not everyone can take that medication, but when you're a good candidate for it, you start it. We do keep it at very low doses for women, especially because a big side effect with that is hair growth in areas you don't want to have the hair grow, like facial hair. I've even seen it on the neck, having increased neck hair growing with oral minoxidil. This video will talk about primarily the topical minoxidil, which comes in two or 5%. So first is gonna, we're gonna talk about the, the dread shed. Dread shed is the first two months, six to eight weeks of shedding. It can happen as soon as two to three weeks after starting your minoxidil foam and you wanna start it off at one to two times a day. Max efficacy can be achieved with twice a day application. As early as two to three weeks, you can start seeing increased hair shedding. And why does that happen? The Minoxidil works by increasing blood flow to your scalp and to the hair follicles and then that increased blood flow will lead to healthier hair. We postulate that the minoxidil is trying to convert your hair cycle to go more in the growth phase or antigen phase and leave the telogen phase, which is the sleep phase. When you're under a lot of stress, we have this thing called telogen effluvium. If you had surgery, if you got really sick, your hair is gonna go into hibernation mode and go into the sleep mode, which we don't want it to be in because it's gonna sit there, it's gonna fall out in a couple of months, it's gonna be a pretty sad looking hair, and then the cycle restarts. So what minoxidil does is it's gonna kick your hair shafts into overdrive and get out of the sleep phase and go into growth phase and try to stay in growth in the growth phase as much as possible because the growth phase is a beautiful time for a hair. I need to get my hair cut like every one to two weeks and I'm excited to get my hair cut tomorrow. When your hair is in the growth phase, it's gonna get thicker and more pigment. So that's a really important phase for all of us. We want more thicker, fuller, hair, more dense, luscious hair with pigment, okay? So I would say that's a huge bonus, but when you get out of that telogen phase, that sad hair is gonna get ejected from the hair follicle itself, and then you get a new hair once you're in the growth phase. So don't worry, that dread shed does happen with oral and topical minoxidil. And they even had a paper that, that tried to look at if I were to do topical minoxidil while I start off the oral pill, will I actually avoid the dread shed if I'm doing both at the same time? No, you're gonna get dread shed whether you're doing just oral pills, just the topicals, or if you combine the two, it's still gonna happen. But you have to think we're investing in more hair or just less hair fall, less hair loss, okay? And just quickly, you know, topical minoxidil, a lot of patients are using it for that genetic hair loss called androgenetic alopecia for males, where we have a receding hairline, decreased hair 
on the top of her scalp, starting at the crown of her scalp, and then you see it when it's full progress stages, the whole top of the scalp is bald. So that's androgenetic alopecia. Then there's a female form of androgenetic alopecia that I just coined as female pattern alopecia. It's gonna present more with decreased density of your hair. You're gonna see more of your part. Your part's gonna widen. The scalp is just gonna be more visible over time. So just decreased density is what we see for females. And this is where minoxidil comes in. Another shocking fact is that you see the marketing for minoxidil over the counter when you go to the store, you say Costco, it'll say 5% minoxidil men's strength only for men's use, which is totally not right. If you're not pregnant and you're a female, you can use the men's strength. It's all marketing. And maybe the studies were with 5% was just with male subjects. And so they market it as a male only product, but actually females can use the 5% minoxidil. Okay. Don't go for the 2%. I don't think that does much, okay? 5% already takes a long time and we'll talk about expectations. So go with 5% if you're not pregnant and use it one to two times a day. If you can do it twice a day, good for you, okay? Next would be the application to the scalp. Like I mentioned when I saw that video, is ideal. You wanna be able to part your, your hair as much as possible and get the medicine on the scalp skin itself. We don't wanna treat the hair shafts, we wanna treat the scalp. So apply the medication to the scalp and then you can apply your hair products after if you want to style your hair afterwards, do that after your minoxidil, okay? Other thing is, this can be toxic to your pets. A lot of my patients have pets, and so we have to talk about, for toxicity reasons, this, just a small amount of ingestion, being in contact with minoxidil, this is very lethal to your dogs and cats, especially cats have been reported to pass away from being exposed to minoxidil topically. So storing it appropriately when you're applying the solution or the foam into your hand before you apply it onto your scalp, making sure your pets aren't in the area because that inadvertent exposure where you spilled the product on your pets, there are reports of it being fatal to your pets. So just keeping it away from your pets and then making sure it's fully dry before you snuggle with your pets as well. It can take two to four hours for it to fully dry, so keep that in mind, okay? Next is I prefer the foam over the solution. The solution can be quite drying and irritating to your scalp. It has propylene glycol, which they think is probably the culprit of irritation, dryness, the flaking, and you wanna stay with your medicine for as long as you can, because if you stop your minoxidil, this is another shocking fact, if you stop your minoxidil at any point, it's gonna fall, your hair's gonna fall out and go back to baseline. So you gotta stay with it. It's like working out. You get nice abs for the summer, and you're working out, then you stop working out, you get flabby again. Minoxidil's the same. You gotta invest in it, you gotta stay with it if you wanna keep up with the results, okay? It's not a permanent fix. So you wanna choose a formulation that works well for your scalp. So the brand can, can differ, but the formulation, whether it's foam or solution, can differ quite a bit. So I used to tell my patients, use the foam, apply it to the scalp skin, use it one to two times a day. Now in terms of expectations, how long does it take to get to see results? You go through dread shed in the beginning and everyone just is so anxious about it, understandably, right? And I see that even with the laser caps getting that initial shedding because a laser cap is working similarly with increasing the time spent in antigen and kicking it your hairs out of the telogen, the resting phase. And so some patients stop too soon because they're seeing the hair shed and they're like, oh no, this isn't working, this is making things worse. Number two, they stop too soon because because they don't know that it takes six to nine months. I usually tell patients more nine months before you start seeing improvement. Zero to two months, you have the hair shedding. Two to four to five months, you start seeing you're losing hair at a slower rate. We all lose 100 hairs a day and that's fine, but you're gonna notice that you're going more towards the 100 hairs instead of the accelerated hair loss, like a baseline. So you start seeing that at about two to five months. And then at six to nine, you might see new baby hairs. Just keep that in mind that your the hair that comes in is gonna be maybe small, fine, lighter colored hairs coming in at the hairline, say for males, you see faster results with the oral pill. I, I usually see it like four months. You might start seeing those baby hairs four to six months. The topical, definitely wait six to nine before judging your topical minoxidil. If you are getting irritation, that usually happens in the first month. You'll start noticing your hair, your, your scalp getting dry and irritated. Then switch brands or switch formulations because I don't want you having any irritation on your scalp, giving your hair follicles an excuse to go back into the sleep phase. We don't want that, right? So we want healthy hair coming in that's not being impaired by irritation and inflammation from your minoxidil. And if you like it, you gotta stay with it permanently. 
pretty much, you know, because if you stop, like we said, it'll go back to baseline. It won't go worse to than, than if you didn't start it, you know, it wouldn't, it's not like you're harming your scalp and it's gonna go backwards and take 10 steps back from baseline. It'll just go back to where it would be if you never started minoxidil. In terms of product placement, you wanna make sure you're not letting it fall towards your forehead or other parts of your face because it will cause hair growth in those areas. So I've seen patients who weren't careful applying the medicine and they started getting hair growing out of their forehead and you don't want that eyebrow to be blending in with your hairline, right? So keep it just to where you want fuller hair and try your best not to let it drip down towards your face. There are some brushes like the eyebrow brushes you could use to get a little extra minoxidil onto your eyebrow. Not your eyelashes, don't treat your eyelashes, just your eyebrows. You wanna keep the medicine away from your eye, your conjunctiva and your eyelid as much as possible. So you just gently apply some of the minoxidil over the eyebrow to get fuller eyebrows. That is a nice little hack you could do. Just be careful, get an appropriate brush to use that to apply the medication. Another thing that's in the studies is that if you apply the solution of minoxidil, say you like got the solution and you're like, oh darn, I, I can't tolerate the solution. You can actually treat the proximal nail fold once a day with your minoxidil and they've shown by comparing one hand to the other that if you treat it with minoxidil, that proximal nail fold, you can actually grow your nails faster. So that's another hack you could use with your solution of your minoxidil, just dropping it just in that area. Not too much, just, you know, one drop at the at the cuticle proximal nail fold area that will help with nail growth. So pretty cool right there. You know, that's another nice little hacks, a little different ways you can use minoxidil. And then just to let you know that when I mentioned minoxidil, the branded form, very common one is Rogaine, but I do feel like the Costco, you have a Costco membership, the Kirkland brand, is great, my patients like it, and it's actually very affordable. I think you get your best deal with Costco's Kirkland Minoxidil. But again, it says men, so if you're a female, you're not pregnant, go for it, okay? You can use that. Always see your dermatologist for hair loss because there are different types of hair loss. We can help you determine what is most likely the cause. Another form of non-scarring alopecia is alopecia areata, which is where you get discrete patches of no hair in the area. It's pretty much just a bald patch, has discrete patches, and it can progress to being your whole scalp and then your whole body being affected, even eyelashes, eyebrows, you can lose your hair. So making sure to see your dermatologist about your hair loss before even jumping to say minoxidil. If it's rapidly progressing, definitely see a doctor. You don't wanna miss something that's serious, something that will turn into a scar and alopecia, like lupus, for example. There's no magic bullet out right now that you can take a magic pill and everything will be reversed. I think a lot of times you have to combine different things like a laser cap with your minoxidil. By combining the two, you can actually increase the efficacy of your minoxidil. There's a synergistic benefit to using that. You know, if you want to throw in some supplements like Nutrafol or Viviscal, I'm okay with that too. The more things you can combine, the, the better results, okay? So please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys for the next video. We're releasing new videos every Saturday morning, so please hit that bell notification. Take care, peace.